I hope my son's antics don't disturb you. Madam, were it in my power to sentence him to 30 days hard labor, they would not disturb me in the slightest. Smashing day for it. On holiday? No. Oh, Leslie. Uh, it isn't true. Oh, oh big pardon, ma'am. Miss. Yes, of course, yes. Have to be, wouldn't it? Damn fool. I suppose I'll be expected to tend to his wounds after he piles up, and I don't fear that. No one injured, at least. No apparent damage to the cars. Young fool must lead a charmed life. That's the lot. My money's on the servants. The servant's usually always the guilty one in the end. Welcome to Sticklehaven, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Davis, the Harbour Master. Sorry. Waiting for me. That's everyone, then. The other bags are already on board the boat there. Blimey. It must be him. In the flesh. All set, Nerikos. Ready, sir. Right. I'll leave it to you then. Seas calm. Should be a pleasant crossing. If you leave now, there's a squall coming. I can smell it. Why is it called Shipwreck Island? Well, the weather can turn nasty quickly. There are many submerged rocks, lots of wrecks hereabouts. And that big rock at the tip is said to resemble a beached schooner. The locals call it Ship Rock. You're not from around these parts, then, Mr. Naraka? No, sir, I'm not. It'll never work. If you would be so good as to follow that path up to the house, my wife will show you to your rooms. I expect you'd all like to freshen up after your journey. Where's Fred? Under the weather. I took his place. You'd be the brother then. I see the resemblance. Will you help me with the bags? Yes. I've been hoping to get a look at the house. Chapter 1 Ten little sailor boys went out to dine. One choked his little self, and then there were nine. Thank you for your assistance, Mr. Narricot. Everything and everyone nicely in place. I must say, I don't much like these clouds. I expect you should be heading back without delay. Now it begins. Don't worry, Fred. I won't let you down. Oh, just a drizzle. It's going to get much worse. This house looks as sturdy as a fortress. The grass is slippery and the slope is steep. 
I'd best stick to the path. No. These rocks are too precarious to climb. I'd better stick to the path. Lit? Well, this island isn't as primitive as I imagined. Scuttled. I wonder who would have done such a thing. <sighs> the sea looks daunting. Wouldn't want to be caught out there without a good motor. Gave me quite a turn. Taking a stroll, Mr. Marston. Uh, just a short constitutional before dressing for dinner. That storm's closing in. This drizzle's about to turn ugly. Yes, looks beastly. What's that you're carrying? This? Just some paper and string I found on the beach. Roger seems like a tartar for ordering cleanliness. Thought I'd help out. Terribly nice of you. Well, I'm heading to the house. If I were you, I'd do the same. Won't do to get caught out here when the brunt of this storm hits. I'll be along directly, Mr. Marston. Yes, yes, of course, old boy. Whatever you say. That was rather odd behavior. Mr. Narakot, why are you still on the island? Someone scuttled my boat. Scuttled? Wrecked, you mean? But who on earth would do such a thing? I intend to find out. But that means, who will come for us on Monday? Unless this storm lets up, no one. Dear me, dear me. Come in, come in. You'll catch your death out here. I must help my wife prepare dinner. I'll have her fix you up something in the kitchen. Thank you. Where he's going to sleep, I'll never know. Ethel won't like this one bit. Fresh flowers, quite pretty. It's an albatross. I can't say I'm particularly fond of the painting. The subject matter doesn't interest me. A radiator. You can't have enough of them, really. It's a rather ostentatious painting. A place for everything and everything in its place. Ten little sailor boys. Charming. It'll never work, I tell you. We should never have agreed. A house party only a week after we arrive? And no other help? Ethel, calm yourself. You promised me. Never again, you said. How was I to know? Oh, ah, Mr. Narricot. Uh, Ethel will be preparing you a meal in here once the guests are served. It's a sturdy cast iron stove. It's a press. Looks like it can hold quite a large amount of fruit. I don't need to lug this around with me. It's a full sack of flour. There. 
back to their original state. There are some batteries buried under here. Excellent, like hand in glove. The storm is kicking up something fierce. Besides, my time would be better used snooping around inside at the moment. The refrigerator hardly seems large enough for a house of this size. The refrigerator hardly seems large enough for a house of this size. I copied the contents into my notebook. I copied the contents into my notebook. It's a painting of a flower. Looks like a water lily. Interesting painting. Birds don't appeal to me, but someone here certainly fancies them. Your shot, Judge. Yes. You haven't left me much, I confess. I knew judges listened to confessions. I never knew they made them as well. Oh, some judges may have cause. Some doctors as well, I expect. May I interrupt for a moment? I take it you don't play snooker, Mr. Narakot. Otherwise you'd know you should be as still as Lot's wife. May I ask you a question? This is not a time for idle chatter. Not that I'd want to play, even if there was time. I've no talent for the game whatsoever. It's locked fast.
Would you just look at all these silk sheets? All embroidered GS. I'll bet that was that actress who used to live here. But I've dropped them on this filthy floor. Can I give you a hand, Mrs. Rogers? Thank you, Mr. Narricott. You seem like a good sort. I'm sorry for your boat. Locked. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through his luggage. I better not. Nothing out of order in here. I'd best not take anything, though. I'm sure he would notice. I copied the contents into my notebook. clock has stopped. I copied the contents into my notebook. Polished marble spheres and some books. Nothing worth investigating further. Once a bent copper, always a bent copper. Right, Fred? You're talking through your hat. You were the Purcell gang's inside man on the force, not my brother. Your brother? Don't try to kid me, Fred. There's still a handsome reward out for you. Fred is my brother. I'm Patrick Fane. No reason for me to believe you that I can see. There's still a big reward out for Fred Fane. You scuttled my boat to trap me here. You recognized me too. I saw it in your eyes. Only because Davis showed Fred the passenger list yesterday. I came in my brother's place. We didn't think you might mistake me for him. Fred is eight years older than me. Look closely, Blore. You do look young. I noticed that. Thought it must be the sea air. You were taking the Purcells' bribes for years. After the Landor case, people began to ask questions. The Purcells needed what the Yank detective novels call a fall guy. My brother was framed. You were in the clear. Your whole story sounds like a detective novel. I've never stopped trying to clear Fred's name and put you in Dartmoor prison where you belong. Thanks to your greed, I may now have that chance. Maybe you're Patrick, maybe you're Fred. I don't know, and I don't much care. You're either a criminal, or you've been harboring one all these years. I wonder what my fellow guests will think of that. Go on, Mr. Narricot. Hop it. I need to prepare for dinner. Tile and marble. Quite expensive from the look of it. This window leads out to the balcony. It's tightly locked.
Narakot? I thought you'd be long gone by now. That storm's getting pretty fierce. Somebody scuttled my boat. I saw Blore watching you like a hawk eyes its dinner. Could it have been him? Possibly. Any idea why? I'd rather not say. Suit yourself. I'd better get ready for dinner. Oh, Mr. Narcot, I thought that you'd left us. Someone scuttled my boat. Oh, but that's dreadful. Surely the harbour master will send another boat when you're missed. Not in this storm, I'm afraid. And even then, it won't be reported. Why ever not? My brother. He knew I might not be immediately back. I'm terribly sorry for your trouble. The Owens should be arriving shortly. I'm sure you can get a ride back in that boat. If you'll excuse me, I must get ready for dinner. Yes? Oh, Mr. Maricott, I had a question for you. Uh, have you heard anything in Sticklehaven about this house being set up as a guest house? No, Miss Brent. No, Mrs. Rogers hasn't either. And who are the Owens? I haven't met them yet. Uh, would it surprise you to learn neither have Mr. and Mrs. Rogers? It's odd. Very odd. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Narricott, I must make dinner preparations. My wife is indisposed, and not receiving visitors today. Your wife, sir? What? Your wife? My wife, yes. Leslie. Oh, I'm sorry, my boy. I was wool gathering miles away. My apologies. <coughs> Must dress for dinner now. Send my orderly to me, if you will. I... No, 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 that's not right. What was I thinking? I must get ready for dinner now. That sounds like the dinner bell. Mr. Narricot, unfortunately, we are not prepared for your presence at dinner. I would be most happy to deliver you a sandwich later this evening, if that will do. That will be fine, Rogers. Thank you. Excellent. Now, if you will excuse me, I must get to serving. By all means. I can hear them all in the dining room chattering. I can't quite make out what they're saying. This might be a good time to explore the house more thoroughly. Aha! With my ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Wine, doctor? No, thank you, Rogers. I never touch alcohol. Except for sterilizing wounds or instruments, of course. I tried to collect some apples from an orchard on the island, but a bee stung me. I'm afraid I dropped the basket and ran. No need to apologize. I myself am dreadfully allergic to bees, wasps, hornets. I'm sorry to hear there are bees here. Oh, you must take care. There's all sorts of those bee house things. What do you call it? An apiary. Oh, I thought that was for monkeys. Ethel. Miss Claythorne. We've never met, but I do seem to recall your name. Oh? Yes. From when I stayed at that stuffy old hotel near St. Trednick. Do you know it? No. No, I don't think so. Really? How extraordinary. I was so sure. Narricott says he's not Fred Fane, but his brother. It may well be, but he bears watching. He seems like such a nice man. They said the same thing about Stevenson, the child murderer. I confess I've never met our host, Mr. Owen. What kind of a man is he? Rogers? We haven't seen the Owens either, sir. We were only engaged a week ago by letter and asked to make the house ready. So no one has actually met the Owens. How extraordinary. I, for one, will have some sharp questions for the Owens when they do arrive. Copper pots, just as I'd expect.
They don't need it. And I'm no pack rat. It's a marble sculpture of an elephant. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through his luggage. I better not. I find this painting particularly bland. I copied the contents into my notebook. I transcribe the pertinent passages in my notebook. I guess Owen made sure no clocks in the house are working. This one is stopped. It's modern. I don't like it personally, although I suppose it fits in with the rest of the house. It's a chair. It doesn't look very comfortable. I don't think going through that would help. Either he's innocent, in which case I'd be grossly invading his privacy, or he's guilty and surely wouldn't be daft enough to leave any evidence in his luggage. I copied the contents into my notebook. Another seabird. This one looks like an albatross. Shocking. A hawk with a fish in its talons. The bird theme is starting to get to me. That's an interesting clock. A shame it doesn't seem to work. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through her luggage. I'd better not. This is a fairly sparse makeup case. Vera isn't the type to use much makeup, though. I 
I'd almost swear I recognize that chap. Does he have the eyes of a killer? I think I recognize this lady. Perhaps she owned the house in the past. Who knows? She may still. I copied the contents into my notebook. I copied the contents into my notebook. I'm guessing Ethel went through the trouble of supplying most of the rooms with fresh flowers. Various toiletries. Nothing of interest that I can see. Let me examine this further. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through her luggage. I'd better not. It's a small waste paper bin. It's empty. I copied the contents into my notebook. Emily must be more concerned with aging than she lets on. It appears to be a portrait of the general. Must be quite old. He's standing with a very young woman. It's signed, To John, My Husband, Leslie. I copied the contents into my notebook. This could use a closer look. I copied the contents into my notebook.
Nothing else to see about that. This could use a closer look. There is no cause for that. Hmm. This is certainly a clue of some sort. I copied the contents into my notebook. I see nothing remarkable. I see nothing remarkable. Ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Did anyone else see the poem over the fireplace? Ten little sailor boys. Yes, I saw it. And here before us as the centerpiece of our table are the ten little sailor boys themselves, all looking correct and polished. I like a neat and tidy house, Your Honor. Robson, the man who built this house, was a sailor. Perhaps Mr. Owen inherited them from him. Another question for Mr. Owen. As I remember, the rhyme was about soldier boys. Highly inappropriate, as I recall. There are many variations. You seem to know quite a bit about it, Miss Claythorne. I... I was a governess before seeking secretarial work. Governesses spend a lot of time with nursery rhymes. All gratuitously gruesome, if you ask me. So much violence in the world today. Sometimes violence is necessary, Miss Brent. There speaks a soldier for you. A realist, Miss Brent, not a dreamer. If action needs to be taken, I, for one, am fully prepared to take it. How does the famous rhyme go, Miss Clayton? Must we harp on this topic at dinner? Miss Brent may be right, Mr. Marston. The rhyme is a bit gruesome. It's there over the fireplace in the parlour if you care to have a look later. If you think so. Excellent meal, Rogers. My compliments to both you and your good woman. You've done your employers proud. Thank you, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Most gratifying, I'm sure. After dinner drinks will be served in the front parlor. Ladies and gentlemen, silence, please. This is your host, UN Owen. You are charged with the following indictments. Edward George Armstrong, that you did upon the 14th day of March 1925, cause the death of Louisa Mary Cleese. Emily Caroline Brent, that upon the 5th of November 1931, you were responsible for the death of Beatrice Taylor. William Henry Bloor that you brought about the death of James Stephen Landor on October 10th, 1928. Vera Elizabeth Claythorne, that on the 11th day of August, 1935, you killed Cyril Ogilvy Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that upon a date in February, 1932, you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon Mackenzie, that on the 4th of January 1917, you deliberately sent your wife's lover, Arthur Richmond, to his death. Anthony James Marston, that upon the 14th day of November last, you were guilty of the murder of John and Lucy Combs, Thomas Rogers, and Ethel Rogers. That on the 6th of May, 1929, you brought about the death of Jennifer Brady, Lawrence John Wargrave. 
that upon the 10th day of June 1934, you were guilty of the murder of Edward Seaton. Prisoners at the bar, have you anything to say in your defense? Doctor, I only fainted Rogers. I'm sure she'll be fine. Narricot, will you get my bag from my room? Yes, of course. Stout fellow, master, in a moment I'll want help to get her to her room. Of course. Behind the kitchen, is it, Rogers? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You can use that door. These are very expensive linens. I bet they're very strong. Thank you, Mr. Narricot. I am in your debt. Now, Rogers, tell us about that extraordinary voice. It was Mr. Owen, sir. In his letter, he wrote to me to put it on the gramophone once you were all settled in here after dinner. That was Mr. Owen's voice? You doubt that it was? No, no, no. I thought I recognized it. I'm sure I'm mistaken. A disgraceful practical joke. You think it was a joke? What else could it be? I will need to hear more evidence before offering an opinion. Mr. Marston and I carried Mrs. Rogers to her room. I gave her a mild sedative. She's resting comfortably. Whoever it was on that recording, that person knows or has taken the trouble to find out a good deal about us all. He was correct about Seton. I presided at the trial, but all I did was execute a guilty man. I remember the case. As I recall, there was some talk. Happily, guilt and innocence are decided by those of us qualified to make a judgment, not by gossip. Of course, there is one omission in that recording. Mr. Narricot, of course. Although to hear Mr. Bloor tell it, he might have earned a place on that list had Mr. Owen been so inclined. Any truth to the accusation against you? It's a matter of interpretation, you understand. But I'd have to say, yes. Will you tell me how it happened? Elderly woman. Poor devil. I'd been up all night with an emergency case. My nerves were shot, hands shaking. But I had to operate. I had to try and save her. I had a pick-me-up or two to steady myself, but I... I bungled. It wasn't the drink, I swear. It was an accident. Could have happened to anyone in my profession. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? Owen sent me a note, asking me to have a look at his wife, who's been suffering from arthritis and muscle spasms. What was the gossip concerning the Seton case? I'm not one to spread gossip to just anyone about a man as distinguished as Justice Wargrave. If I were certain about it, perhaps. But I'm not. If you'll excuse me, Doctor. Any truth to the accusation against you? The name sounded vaguely familiar. I expect it will come to me. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? Got a wire from a pal of mine, Badger Barkley. Surprised me at the time because I had an idea the old horse had gone to Norway. Told me to roll up here. That will be enough, Mr. Marston. 
any truth to the accusation against you? It's true we were the only ones there the night Miss Brady died. But she was always in poor health. Always, from the time we came to her. Will you tell me how it happened? There was a storm, as fierce as the one brewing outside right now when she was taken bad. The telephone was out of order. I went for the doctor on foot, but he got there too late. Were you mentioned in the will? Barely. Certainly not what we were led to believe. She was just saying it, you see, to ensure our devotion to her. Beg pardon. I'm not sure what came over me just then. The strain of tonight, I expect, and worry over Mrs. Rogers, of course. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? We expected to finally meet Mr. and Mrs. Owen today. Ethel didn't want to take the job, but I insisted. I'm beginning to wish I'd listened to her. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. No need to call unnecessary attention to my snooping. I shouldn't do that. I need to have my wits about me. Any truth to the accusation against you? I remember Seaton perfectly well. Playwright, not a very good one. Charged with the murder of a chorus girl. He was very ably defended and made a good impression on the jury. Nevertheless, it was clear to me he'd done it. Thank you kindly, Judge. Any truth to the accusation against you? About that child, Cyril Hamilton. I was nursery governess to him. Will you tell me how it happened? I'd like to tell you. Cyril was forbidden to swim out far. One day, my attention was distracted. I couldn't get there in time. It was awful. But it wasn't my fault. At the inquest, the coroner exonerated me. Oh, and his mother. She was so kind. If she didn't blame me, why should this awful thing be said? Are you sure you're telling me everything? I'm telling you all I'm going to, Mr. Narricott. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? I was engaged through an agency to be Mrs. Owen's secretary. Nothing remarkable in that, is there? A good evening to you, Miss Claythorne. Stay safe. Any truth to the accusation against you? Fellow got hold of a detestable rumor, nothing more. Arthur Richmond was one of my officers. I sent him on a reconnaissance, he was killed. Natural course of events in wartime. Good evening, General. Any truth to the accusation against you? Owen did his research well. The accusation is absolutely true. I don't see that you've earned the right to any details, though. Will you tell me how it happened? Oh, it was written up in the papers at the time. A story of self-preservation, pure and simple. A hunting party lost in the bush. The great white hunter checks the food supplies, assesses his chances, and clears out on his own. Leaving 21 men to die. Not very Puka Sahib, I'm afraid. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? Owen's attorney, a man named Archibald Morris, rang up one day. He wanted to give me a hundred guineas to join this house party. I was to put myself at Owen's disposal in case my rather specialized talents were required. What specialized talents would those be? You might say I'm a good man in a scrap. Thank you, Lombard. I copied the contents into my notebook. Any truth to the accusation against you? Look, Narricot, if that's what you want to call yourself. The rules have changed. Can't you see that? The past is past. It's the present we should be worrying about. Something is not right here. Will you tell me how it happened? All right, all right. Perhaps I was doing the odd favor for the Purcells. But if your brother was framed, I had nothing to do with it. Yes, they paid me to perjure myself about Landor. Thanks to them, I was able to put enough away to set up my own detective agency. Nothing fancy, but I've been straight ever since, I swear. Landor died. 
He got penal servitude for life and died in Dartmoor a year later. Not my fault he was such a delicate man. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? I run a little detective agency in Plymouth these days. I'm on a job to protect Mrs. Owen's jewels, the letter said. Mrs. Owen, my foot. I don't believe there's any such person. Thanks, Bloor. Any truth to the accusation against you? I have always acted in accordance with the dictates of my conscience. I have nothing with which to reproach myself. Will you tell me how it happened? It was some time before I found out she was what they call in trouble. Her parents were decent folk, too. I'm glad to say they did not condone her behavior when I told them of it. What happened to Beatrice? Naturally, I did not keep an hour under my roof. No one shall ever say that Emily Brent condoned immorality. How did she die? Not content with having one sin on her conscience, she committed a still graver sin. She took her own life, threw herself in the river. If she had behaved like a decent young woman, she'd be alive today. You have no regrets? She made an excellent breakfast. I miss that. Fresh juice every day. What brought you here to Shipwreck Island? I received a letter with a signature that was not very easy to read. It purported to be from a woman I'd met at a certain summer resort two or three years ago. I am quite certain I have never met or become friendly with anyone of the name of Owen. I overheard you mention St. Trednick to Miss Claythorne. I was staying at a seaside hotel near St. Trednick this same week of August four years ago. That boy Cyril Hamilton drowned near there. It was the talk of the town. His half-brother was much older. Hugo, I think his name was. Cyril was a vile child, by all accounts, but first in line for the family title and estates. When he died, it all went to Hugo. He was just about Miss Claythorne's age. There was talk of something between them. You're suggesting Vera let the boy drown so the man she loved could inherit? That would be idle gossip. I don't indulge in idle gossip. I've only told you the facts of the case as I remember them. That is all, Miss Brett. Interesting history Shipwreck Island has. I'd studied up on it before I came down. What are the names of those two people I'm accused of killing? John and Lucy Combs. I made a note of it. Must have been a couple of kids I ran over near Cambridge. Beastly bad luck. For them, or for you? Well, I was thinking for me, but of course you're right, sir. It was damned bad luck on them. Of course it was a pure accident. They rushed out of some cottage or other. Beastly nuisance. English roads are hopeless, of course. Can't get up a decent pace on them. Well, anyway, it wasn't my fault. This man is dead. Did Marston choke to death? You can call it choking if you like. He died of asphyxiation right enough. Was Marston poisoned? Can't say exactly. Everything points to one of the cyanides. No distinctive smell of prussic acid. Probably potassium cyanide. It acts pretty well instantaneously. Was there something in the whiskey? Yes, without a doubt. Do you think it was suicide? Seems like it. Could he have been murdered? Not my line of country. I'm a doctor, not a detective. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? Not I, personally or professionally. What do you think that record means? A disgraceful and heartless practical joke, I suppose. That is all for now, Dr. Armstrong. Do you think it was suicide? You conduct yourself well, Mr. Narricott if you don't mind my saying so. Mr. Bloor has told us that you are not what you appear, yet you told him you were not a detective. No, sir, but I've read many detective novels. 
I even had one of those junior detective kits when I was a boy. Magnifying glass, fingerprint powder. Junior detective kit? Wonderful. Ah, an amateur sleuth then. You appear to have something of a gift for it. About the suicide, Judge. I'm not yet prepared to offer an opinion. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? I knew his father, the Duke, and his elder brother. Like so many younger sons of his class, Anthony Marsden was a bit of a wastrel, as you will have gathered. There were other rumors of late, of his dabbling in politics, but this is not the proper forum for that discussion. What do you think that record means? May I answer that in a moment after asking a question of my own? Of course. Does anyone know Mr. Owen's full name? My letter was signed only U.N. Owen. Yes, U.N. Owen. Or, by a slight stretch of fancy, unknown. I'll now answer your question, Mr. Narakot. The name, the recording, the circumstances under which all but you were lured to this island. I have no doubt in my mind that we have been invited here by a madman, very possibly a dangerous homicidal lunatic. Why did you retire, Judge? I know there was talk about my competence, even my ego running wild, but the truth of it is very simple. My health. A lifetime sentencing my fellow man, and now a higher power has passed judgment on me. Thank you kindly, Judge. Do you think Marston committed suicide? Yes. In my experience, certain types of individuals, when faced with their sin, will then commit the greater one. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? No. What do you think that record means? There is something very peculiar about it. That is all, Miss Brett. Do you think Marston committed suicide? I shouldn't have said Mr. Marston was a suicidal type of gentleman at all. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? Never clapped eyes on him. And who gave you the authority to question us? You are under no obligation to answer me. What do you think that record means? I don't like it. Not one bit. Very queer, the whole situation. That'll do, Mr. Bloor. Do you think Marston committed suicide? He didn't seem particularly remorseful. Of course, the record might have set him off somehow. A new incident long after the fact may create a strong feeling of guilt or fear. Wouldn't you say, Doctor? Possible. Quite possible. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? Heard of him, but we'd never crossed paths or swords. What do you think that record means? There is something wrong with this entire weekend and especially with our host, Mr. Owen. I believe we're all coming around to that conclusion. Yes, but I know something you don't, Judge. What is that? I recognize the voice on that recording, and it was definitely not Mr. Owen. Who was it? Not so fast, Narakat. Not until I think things through a bit more. Good evening, Mr. Lombard. Do you think Marston committed suicide? You'd never think he would kill himself. He was so alive. When he came down that hill in his car, he looked... He looked... Oh, I can't explain. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? No. He... I I'm sure I would have remembered. Steady, Miss Claythorne. The lad had his faults, you know. What do you think that record means? It was unfair, what it said. Very unfair. You seem to be a remarkably perceptive girl, Miss Claythorne. Why, thank you, Mr. Narakot. Is there anything you can tell me about our fellow castaways? Castaways? You make it sound so... Romantic? I was going to say dramatic. Let me see. No one has confided any secrets to me, I'm afraid. Oh, except one. That is? I really don't know you well enough to answer you. A pleasure as always, Miss Claythorne. Do you think it was suicide? 
How dare you? My wife died of natural causes, sir. A long illness, nothing more. I meant Marston. Marston? No honor in him that I could see. Did you know Marston before he arrived here today? No, I don't think so. Not a military man, I'd wager. Lombard now. He reminds me of someone from my command. But the name wasn't Lombard. What do you think that record means? Ugly. After 30 years. Ugly thing to say. Good evening, General. Where have you been, Rogers? I went to check on my wife, sir. She is resting comfortably. But I'm afraid I have some distressing news. Oh? One of the China figures of a sailor boy has been broken off. <laughs>